energy and change. In this video, we're going to be speaking about important definitions and concepts that you need to know for this topic. You need to know these definitions and these concepts in order to understand energy and energy change in chemical reactions. We'll be looking at things like what does heat of reaction mean? What does exothermic, endothermic mean? Activation energy, activated complex, catalyst, all of those things. Let's jump right in. But before we do, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I do lots of math and science videos. Can't wait to see you in future videos. Let's jump right in. First things first, you need to learn your definition. So here are some of the definitions that you can expect in this topic. Starting off with enthalpy change or heat of reaction, otherwise known as delta H. Delta is the symbol for this triangle. It means change in H. H is enthalpy. Now enthalpy is the total internal energy of all the different substances that take part in a chemical reaction. It's very difficult to measure enthalpy, but we can measure change in enthalpy. So enthalpy or energy changes when energy is transferred out of or into a system. So if energy is released or if energy is absorbed, enthalpy will change. There'll be a change in enthalpy. And this is often accompanied by heat transfer. That's why it's also called heat of reaction. The unit for enthalpy change or heat of reaction is kilojoules per mole. And we can calculate it using this formula. Enthalpy of products minus enthalpy of reactants. This formula works when you are given a potential energy diagram and then they ask you to calculate the change in enthalpy. For example, in this reaction, we can work out the change in enthalpy by saying the energy of the products or the heat of the products, here's products over here, corresponds to 100 minus the energy of the reactants, reactants are over here, it corresponds to 400, 100 minus 400, negative 300 kilojoules per mole. The second important definition or term is called activation energy. Now, activation energy, think about it, it's energy needed to activate. It's energy needed to start off a chemical reaction. The official definition is it is the minimum energy needed for a chemical reaction to take place. So we can always, always identify activation energy by looking at a potential energy diagram. And it is from the reactants, so it's from the energy of the reactants up to the energy of the activated complex, which is by the peak of the curve. Now, please take note, grade 11s or grade 12s, whoever's watching this, sometimes they may indicate the arrow inside here like that. Sometimes they may indicate it on the outside like that. They're indicating the same thing. They're saying that it's the energy from the reactants, so from here, to the activated complex. So if I were to ask you, what is the activation energy for this reaction? You would say, well, it starts at 400 and it ends at 900. So it went up by 500. So the activation energy is 500 joules, 500 kilojoules, 500 kilojoules per mole. What They'll give you the unit on this axis over here. So 500 is the activation energy. And please note that we can get the activation energy for the forward reaction or for the reverse reaction. Now I did cover this in uh, the previous video in this playlist, but the forward reaction is read from left to right. So for the forward reaction, it is basically what you see on this diagram over here. These are the reactants, these are the products. The activation energy is always from the reactants up to the activated complex, easy. So the activation energy for the forward reaction was what we just calculated, 500. But if they want the activation energy for the reverse reaction, we need to read this graph in reverse, okay? So these will then be the reactants. So instead of these being the products, these will then turn into reactants. And the products over here, there we go. They'll swap places. So again, activation energy is from the reactants up to the activated complex. So the activation energy for the reverse reaction will be from here all the way up to the activated complex. And what do you think the activation energy is therefore for this reverse reaction? For the reverse reaction, it's from the 100 up to the 900. So what's the difference between 100 and 900? 800. Okay, so they have different activation energies. The next important term is the activated complex. And this is the unstable transition state. So transition means it's going between two things. 
from reactants to products in a chemical reaction. Basically, if you look at the potential energy diagram of a reaction, it is the peak of the curve over there. Essentially, what happens is we have our reactants. They have a certain energy or enthalpy. They absorb energy, activation energy. And that energy, what that energy does, the activation energy that is absorbed, is it causes the bonds of the reactants to break. Think about it. If we break compounds or molecules, we break the bonds, they're going to form individual atoms. This is the unstable transition state. It's a transition between reactants and products. It's unstable because it's not very good for react for the atoms to just be existing by themselves. It's not stable and things tend towards stability. So they will want to rejoin, reconfigure in a new way to form products. The next two terms that are very important for you to understand is exothermic and endothermic. So for this video, I'm going to keep it brief. I will do a video where I go over exothermic reactions versus endothermic reactions, but to keep it brief, Exo means that heat is exiting, heat is leaving. Think of exo, exit. Endothermic means that heat is entering, we're taking in energy or heat. When we break bonds, we're taking in energy, it's an endothermic process. When we're making bonds, we are releasing energy, it is an exothermic process. What this ends up resulting in is two different looking potential different um, potential energy curves. So if you look at the exothermic curve, you can see that the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. The reason why is because exothermic means that there's a net exit or a net release of energy. More energy is released than what's taken in. So we take in a little bit, we release a lot. That's why the energy of the products is much lower than the energy of the reactants. The graph looks like this. Endothermic is a net intake of energy. So what it means is we take in a lot of energy and we release a little bit. That's why the energy of the products is much higher than the energy of the reactants. We only release a little bit of what we took in. Another term that you need to know is catalyst. You need to know what a catalyst is. You need to know what a catalyst does. So now a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without itself undergoing a permanent change in the reaction. So what this means is that the catalyst will increase the rate of the reaction, it'll make the reaction go quicker, it'll make the reaction go faster, it'll make the reaction reach finish, it'll finish quicker, that's basically it. But the catalyst never changes itself. So basically think of a catalyst as something that comes along, it helps speed up the reaction, increases the rate, and then the catalyst goes off again completely unchanged. It doesn't react with the other reactants. So why do we need a catalyst? If the activation energy is very high, the reaction will take place slowly. The reason why, let's look at this graph, if the activation energy, which would be over here, as you can see, they also represented with this arrow over here, it's the same thing. If the activation energy is very big, it's a very high activation energy, which this one is, the reaction is going to take a while to happen because a lot of energy needs to be absorbed in order for the bonds to be fully broken. So what a catalyst does is the catalyst lowers the activation energy. This is super, super, super important. You need to know that catalysts lower the activation energy. And what this does is it gives the reaction an alternative pathway or mechanism. Basically, it allows the reaction to continue with a decreased activation energy. And remember, the catalyst remains unchanged after the reaction occurs. So this is a reaction curve or a potential energy diagram. And this is what it looks like without a catalyst. The solid line is without a catalyst and the dotted line is with a catalyst. I want you to be observant of things on this diagram. The first thing that I see is that the dotted line and the solid line start and end at the same place. What that means is that the energy of the reactants and the energy of the products remain unchanged. However, take a look at these curves. The peak of this curve is much lower than the peak of this curve. What it means is that if I had to draw an arrow indicating the activation energy for the reaction without a catalyst, it would look like this. 
if I had to draw an arrow for the activation energy of the reaction with a catalyst, it would start here and end here. Remember, you can also draw it inside the curve like that compared to the other one, which would go like that. Can you see that when we have a catalyst, the activation energy has been lowered? It's much smaller. Those are all the definitions that you need to know for this lesson. I hope it's been helpful. Remember, if you want more details on certain video or certain topics like exothermic versus endothermic or maybe heat of reaction, check out the other videos in this playlist. Also, past paper practice. I can't wait to see you all in more videos in the future. Please subscribe if you haven't done yet. Give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you in another one very soon.